Okay, thank you, Christian. Thank you for the brief introduction and good day to everyone. As it was already mentioned, I will be having a short presentation on the slot char, which is all, which can be also called a biochar from sewage sludge. So I hope it will also fit the scope of this webinar. Uh, I decided to I decided to let's say divide this presentation into three basic stages. Those would be why even consider sewage sludge for pyrolysis. Then I will show some sludge char properties, and then I will speak briefly about some obstacle or obstacles for sludge char production itself. So first to understand why shall we consider pyrolysis for sewage sludge? Uh, as we can see on this uh, picture, uh, around half of the sewage sludge itself is used in agriculture or by composting for producing the uh, fertilizer-like substance. Uh, this seems to be rational uh, because uh, sewage sludge itself uh, contains organic matter and nutrients, including the phosphorus which is uh, currently on the list of critical raw materials of European Union. However, uh, beside this, uh, well, let's say uh, good sides of the sewage sludge, it has also some disadvantages and those would be the legislative restrictions on the heavy metals, which are eventually uh, present in the sewage sludge. Also, there are present some pathogens and also recently, uh, there is a big apprehension about the content of um, persistent organic pollutants and pharmaceuticals and personal care products. So that basically means if we use switch sludge directly on the soil, we bring all these contaminants into the soil itself. Uh, as you could also see, the other big share of the switch sludge uh, disposal is the incineration. Uh, Thermal treatment of sewage sludge has a, a few very nice advantages, and that is uh, preferably the significant reduction in volume and mass of the sludge. By incinera incineration, we destruct the organic pollutants present in the sludge. And as the result, uh, we obtain ashes in which the concentration of valuable elements, such as also phosphorus, are uh, concentrated. Uh, there is a potential gain for energy, and of course, uh, these ashes are stabilized, hygienized, and they can be uh, stored in a long term. Uh, however, uh, for this technology, drying is needed, and also because we need, if we incinerate the waste, uh, we need to produce clean flue gases, and for that, uh, we need to to use additional technologies for treatment of flue gas. Uh, all this makes this way of disposal quite expensive. And also uh, the point is that uh, public awareness uh, is on point because nobody wants to live nearby the incinerators of waste. Uh, speaking of the ashes, uh, as I mentioned, the, the phosphorus uh, is uh, in a higher concentration than in the sludge itself. But there is few buts, and, and those would be preferably that uh, speaking of phosphorus recovery from ashes, we shall be speaking of mono incineration to prevent contamination or dilution of the phosphorus. Also, the phosphorus bioavailability is very poor or very low. Uh, and for that, it's not very reasonable to apply ash directly on the soil, and we should rather treat it as an intermediate product. Uh, and we should treat it in order to separate phosphorus from the contaminants, preferably heavy metals, in order to produce phosphoric acid and or other products. Uh, speaking of this, this is an extra expense and making this phosphorus recovery cycle even more expensive. So for that, there is a question whether sewage sludge pyrolysis can be an alternative to incineration. Uh, produced sludge char can bring several uh, advantages when applied on soil, and it can potentially uh, 
increase the water re retention of the soil, prevent uh, leaching of nutrients from fertilizers to groundwater. It aerates the soil because it is porous material and also uh, another benefit is carbon sequestration. So just briefly uh, compare these two technologies, uh, I would point out, I would say two or three lines that would be that unlike in case of incineration, we still part of uh, nitrogen remains in the sludge char. And as we can see about the capacity uh, pyrolysis, can be suitable even for smaller locations. I, I mean, based on the capacity of the wastewater treatment plants. And now let's move uh, towards some uh, sludge char properties. I will not go through all of this. You can you can see or find this and even more in in the in the paper which is is presented here. Uh, I will go through two let's say most interesting results, which we observed. Uh, and those would be the sulfur content and, and the heating value. So um, increasing the pyrolysis temperature, uh, we would be expecting a decrease in the sulfur content, which apparently did not happen. And the content of sulfur in the, in the sludge chars was relatively constant. Even if I made the, the sulfur balances uh, based on the temperature range, in all cases, around 50% of sulfur remained in the sludge chars. So the question was, what is happening with the sulfur? For that, we've run two types of uh, analysis for sulfur and sulfur species. Uh, the, the standardized ones and also the uh, X-ray photo electron spectroscopy. Uh, from both of the results, we, we may see that the sulfate content of sludge char decreases on the expense of the increase in sulfide content of sulfur, uh, sulfide content of sludge char. Uh, this might be potentially beneficial because sulfides uh, may bind heavy metals and immobilize them if present in the sludge char. And the other one was that increasing the temperature uh, did not result in continuous decrease in the heating value of the sludge chars. And from the temperatures 600 Celsius degrees, it remained constant. The hypothesis for this was that uh, some elements must get reduced during the process of pyrolysis that would be leading uh, in the end uh, into releasing the, the energy back uh, when stating the heating value in the calorimetric bomb. And one of, uh, one of the elements with a relatively high heating value is phosphorus. We are back to phosphorus again. And unfortunately, our hypothesis did, wasn't approved because we may see that the reduced form of phosphorus was decreasing. And actually the phosphates were increasing. Uh, nevertheless, there are also other elements such as iron, we can, which can go through the oxidation reduction re uh, reactions relatively easily in the presence of carbon. So likely due to a high content of uh, iron in the sludge and sludge char, that could be the reason why we did not observe the continuous decrease in uh, heating value. And now let's uh, go for the obstacles for sludge char production. Uh, I would point out one of the biggest ones discussed nowadays, and that is that because sludge char, same as the sludge, is considered as waste, uh, the regulation uh, on, on European fertilizing products uh, does not include sludge char in component material category for production of these fertilizing products. Uh, this is not the same in the case of incineration and uh, precipitates, precipitate salts, which are allowed. So this is the case for pyrolysis and gasification material from sewage sludge only. And 
this exclusion is based on, let's say, one of the main reasons, and that is that there is a lack of scientific evidence on the impact of organic pollutants on, on the on the human health, and also uh, there is uh, doubt about the removal of these organic pollutants during the pyrolysis process. Uh, so speaking of these organic pollutants, our research group uh, published a paper where we where we were studying uh, the effect of pyrolysis and effect of pyrolysis temperature on the removal of four groups of organic contaminants, namely uh, polychlorinated bifen bifenyls, uh, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, uh, around 20 different pharmaceuticals and some endocrine disrupting and hormonal compounds. Uh, one of the main results of of this experimental campaign was that uh, at the temperature of 400 Celsius degree, uh, degrees, we observed the complete removal of pharmaceuticals, but uh, temperatures higher than 600 Celsius degrees uh, were required to obtain a satisfactory uh, removal efficiency of the organic pollutants studied. And we also moved a little bit forward because now there is a big topic in the scientific world is, is a pair and polyfluoroalkyl substances. Uh, recently, uh, we, we have a paper under revision on the effect of pyrolysis and pyrolysis temperature on the removal of these PFAS substances. As you may see, we, we've run the analysis for 37 different PFAS compounds, from which 18 was detected in the sludge, and the temperature of 600 Celsius degrees was uh, efficient to remove over 99.9% of, of these studied compounds. So from this, let's say, positive news, I will go briefly into the practical conclusions. And those would be that pyrolysis can evolve interesting porous structure of slachar, which is preferably mesoporous. So it also makes this material potential for cleaning waters from dyes or uh, another uh, high molecular weight uh, compounds. Uh, big positive is that pyrolysis stabilizes carbon. So we are speaking of the carbon sequestration. Uh, based on our results, uh, we may conclude that pyrolysis can effectively remove organic pollutants from sewage sludge. But this is also depending on the type of pyrolysis, that means uh, on the temperature and the residence time. Uh, for that, our recommendation would be to pyrolyze sewage sludge at temperatures higher than 500 Celsius degrees, ideally 600 Celsius degrees, in, in a time of at least 10 minutes. And as, as such, the sludge char is or can be considered a soil improver with mid to long term fertilizer value. Fertilizer value, I would explain in the way that uh, the release of the phosphorus and nitrogen is not immediate, but it may be uh, dissolving uh, in, in the longer term. So let's say, let's say it's not efficient for uh, direct uh, fertilization of soils. And that would be all from my side from now. Thank you. And of course, if there are any questions, I will try to answer.